and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus tells his disciples that he's going ahead of them, going ahead of us all, to prepare a place for us in heaven with him and the Father. In this Eucharist, let us pray for ourselves, let us pray for our world at these times, let us open our hearts at that place that Jesus has prepared for us will be fulfilled. For the times that we have failed to live as a people of hope, people of Christian joy, let us ask for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adorn you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O Timon, 
Hermenas, and Nicolaus of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large group of priests made the submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers it is precious, but for unbelievers the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. 
If there were not, I should have told you. I am now going to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip? said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe in me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the integral moments in the conversion of St. Francis is his time when he's praying before the San Damiano cross and is inspired to hear from the Lord a mission, a project for his life. He understands this to be, go Francis, go forth and rebuild my church. Go and rebuild my church. For it, for it is falling into ruin. And St. Francis, the eager, newly reconverted young man, sits about begging through the streets for stones and for other um, objects and so forth, so that he would be able to rebuild the little Portsjunkula and other churches around the valley near Assisi there, the flats. St. Francis takes this mission quite literally at first. Go rebuild my church. His understanding of church are the buildings, the stones. But slowly, slowly through his conversion, he begins to realize that his mission was to rebuild the church through the example, through his, his own personal conversion, the example that he would be able to offer all those who would come into contact with him. When we hear this second reading from St. Peter, talking about the living stones, calling us to be living stones, united with the cornerstone, the cornerstone being Jesus Christ, who was rejected, but chosen by God. There's a beautiful insight within this. I'm not a great uh, builder of stones and so forth, but the cornerstone there is what the other stones take their measure from. The straight line is gathered from the position and orientation of that cornerstone. And so as St. Francis himself aligned himself more and more with Jesus Christ, he was able to bring Jesus Christ, bring the peace and love of God to those whom he encountered, because he set himself in alignment with the cornerstone. And this is what St. Peter is reminding the early Christians in the early church where there were no great cathedrals, there were no great stone 
edifices, beautiful churches dedicated to God. But the faith was strong. And the call was to be living stones united to the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And so together, making through that unity, through that alignment, being the church, becoming the church, existing as a unified body in the image of a building, And so in this time when we're unable to enter some of our beautiful churches, these places that have been set aside, built by our own hands as places for the worship of God, we're not to despair because we're called first and foremost to be a living church, for us to be the stones, to be what the church is made out of, because it's not bricks and mortar. It's each one of you, it's each one of us here, together, in alignment with the cornerstone. This is what makes the church. And we are part of this body, this building, through our baptism. And called, called, to live as a living stone. And what does this look like? It looks like the life, for example, of St. Francis, a life in alignment with Jesus Christ, a life that doesn't promote oneself, but looks for the betterment of the other. It's a generous life. It's a life of giving of oneself for the next generation, for our loved ones, for the poor, for those in need. And this is how we build the church. And in this time, we're called to strengthen our spiritual bonds, strengthen our spiritual relationships with one another so that we as the living church may be exactly that for those whom we encounter. We may be seen like some of the great cathedrals we can think of, Notre Dame in Paris, some of the great Um, churches in Rome and so forth, all these different places, beautiful, wonderful places that lift up the heart, the mind, the soul when we're inside them, when we're before them, when we gaze upon them. Together, when we live in unity with Jesus Christ, that is our mission, to lift the hearts, the souls, the minds of those whom we come into contact with. Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Baptized, chosen as a priestly people, let us come to our Father on behalf of all our brothers and sisters, praying through Christ the way, the truth, and the life. 
for the chosen people and for the people chosen and consecrated by God. That God's holy church throughout the world may always praise him with reverent worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the rulers and leaders of nations. that they may recognise the service provided by the Church and so respect her rights and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the current pandemic. The hospital and medical staff may be protected and strengthened by the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves as living stones in a spiritual house. That we may work with the energy and courage of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers on this Mother's Day, that they may know and experience God's abundant blessing in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters. That they may enter that place Christ has prepared for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father most holy, for the wonders of your generous care. Show again your love for us as we call upon you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, ever come with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord of the hosts,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Fiaca, Saint Francis, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Let us make our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. As it's the vigil of Mother's Day, let us also bless all those mothers in our own lives, from our own lives, but also those mothers. We pray for at this moment, especially expectant mothers. Pray for those mothers who have lost children. We pray for all our mothers that may have already passed from this life. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. 
Bless all mothers, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honour them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.